They got straight up embarrassed in Detroit. And Detroit, for everything that they are not, which is a good basketball team, they're athletic as hell on the wing. And we saw a team in Detroit last night that came out very clearly with a point to prove. And I don't think it's too strong to say that the Utah Jazz got embarrassed by uh, the Detroit Pistons last night. And it was the fact that they just had open looks. I mean, Cade Cunningham cooked. Boyan Bogdanovich, he, I mean, you look at anybody that guarded him outside of Donovan. Um, Royce O'Neal got absolutely blown up by Cade Cunningham last night. Like, there is Sadiq Bey dominated this team last night. I don't understand, and, and, and this is what I struggle with with the Jazz. And I'm sure if you've listened to the show every day, you know this is not new. I don't understand why there's no adjustment being made defensively. Because you can say, well, they got embarrassed last night because Rudy's not in the lineup. The problem with that is then you're telling me that this team is centered on Rudy Gobert and they can't win without him. And if you're centered on a center, if, you're, if your whole team is built with Rudy Gobert in the middle, Jake, I just don't see how you can win a championship that way. Yeah, and I, and I mean, I, I think the mentality of the team is just all messed up right now. You know, uh, you know we're, we're sitting here talking about – how, you know, Cade Cunningham, you know, a young guy in the league, just torched your team. You shouldn't need a big to play good team defense. Hell, the Warriors won multiple championships without a big. Draymond Green was their big. So you can't tell me that this team needs Rudy Gobert to win. Is it nice to have him? Hell yeah, it is. Is it nice to have that rim protection? Absolutely, 100% positively it is. There's no question about that. But but the, again, COVID, Shmovid, right? The team is dealing with protocol. The team is dealing with what every other team in the league has had to deal with this year, and so they're starting to suffer some losses. And I what I, what I really think is fair to say now, and we've been saying it on the show, that, you know, when Rudy's out of the lineup, it exposes a lot of weaknesses that this team has. And if you watch this team and you watch this team intently, you know that the perimeter defense, like last night on Twitter, I saw a bunch of people saying, well, well, you know, Rudy being out uncovered a lot of weaknesses on this team. The fact is Rudy didn't, Rudy being out didn't uncover anything. If you watch this team for months now, you know yeah. that defense is an issue. You know that Boyan Bogdanovich is not a good defender. And so when you're playing this Pistons team, you know, last night they didn't lose because Rudy wasn't in the game. They lost because they were careless with the basketball. They lost because they didn't have a plan defensively for Kate Cunningham. And yeah, to your point, there were no adjustments, and this is the Quinn Snyder conversation that is going to continue to come up. It is. You know, and, and, and I don't know, like, and I'm not sitting here saying there's an obvious adjustment, but you got to do something. I mean, you can't have, you know, Royce O'Neal. You can't have Boyan Bogdanovich. You can't have Eric Paschal all getting torched by Cade, and that's why you, the Pistons were able to walk away. Like, that can't happen. You have to have a solution. Well, and I, I think, obviously, COVID ravaging this roster is a problem. I mean, I, I don't think there's anybody who thinks that this was the best nine guys or whatever he played last night um, with Pell playing. And, I, I mean, this, this is not – but that's not really the point. The point is when you look at this Utah Jazz team, there is a glaring lack of athleticism. There is a glaring lack of understanding defensively. Um, you know, the idea that Sadiq Bey is, is hitting step-back threes that are unguarded. Um, you look at the way Cade Cunningham attacked the basket. Okay, that's one thing. He's dribble driving, pulling up in the, you know, in the ring at the top of the circle, and there's not a hand up on him. And Boyan Bogdanovich almost falling down backwards last night. Royce O'Neal running into, um, I think it was Eric Paschal. I can't remember who he ran into. But Royce O'Neal just running into a teammate trying to guard Cade Cunningham. Like, there is no semblance of calm or composure or – and I, I just don't understand what the point of this game was last night. And if you listen to the show yesterday, if you missed it, go back, check it out on podcast or on our YouTube channel. We talked specifically about Donovan Mitchell leaving this team um, if there is no chance for, you know, them to win a championship. But if you listen to what he said right here – it's not as far fetched as a lot of people said it was yesterday. If we do bury that there, our intensity has to turn up. 
Like we did it against Denver, you know, it's, 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 it's there, but we don't do it consistent. Like I said, in, in um, where we were just at Indiana, don't do it consistently. This is going to happen. And this is one through 17 or however many guys we got in lock. But this isn't just on one person on three people on a selective group. This is everything. We get up excited, happy, whatever. And we, 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 we have a lack of focus. We were locked in when we had to be against Denver. You know, we were locked in from start to finish. It didn't look necessarily pretty all the time, but it, it, it felt like we were communicating and talking. So it's not that we can't. You know, obviously the glaring thing is Rudy's not back there to, to, to save us and protect us on the defensive end, but we've done it. Like, we, we, we did it. So it's okay. It's okay. We're capable. Well, he went on to say in the, the meat of that um, comment is, quote, we're fooling ourselves if we want to win a championship and we have nights like tonight. That's Donovan Mitchell saying that we are not a championship caliber team. Yeah. And now, yeah, I guess it's one thing for me to be saying that since, you know, they, they the start of the playoffs last year. This is the exact same roster. And that's why I've been saying every day, and I'm not trying to tell you, oh, I'm right. Look at me. Look at me. <clears throat> That's not what I'm doing. What I'm telling you is, if you are a Jazz fan who thinks that, oh, well, Rudy was out last night. That's why we lost. Your head's in the sand. You're not watching this team. They did not lose last night because they didn't have Rudy Gobert. They lost last night because they're just not good enough against young athletic wings. And you're seeing the reason they're losing to these lower-end teams is not because, I, like, Dallin on Twitter last night was railing about, this guy Dallin was telling me that I'm just a jazz hater, and, you know, the reason they're losing is they're on a road trip, and they're tired, and, dude, it's early January. You're playing teams like the Indiana Pacers, who, granted, with Lance Stevenson, he's a much better player, and that's a much better team with Lance on the floor you still should beat the Indiana Pacers. Mm -hmm. You should beat the Toronto Raptors. You certainly should beat one of the worst teams in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons. Facts. If you need Rudy Gobert on the floor to beat the Pistons and you lose because he's not there, I, I, I just don't know. I, like, how do you fix that? Because plugging Rudy in last night wouldn't have stopped the Pistons from shooting an incredibly high percentage from three because there were no hands up on him. Like, uh, uh, do you understand? Like, look at, listen to some of these numbers. And these are the numbers that, I, I mean, should terrify you. From three, the Detroit Pistons shot 19 of 37. That's 51% from three. That's because they were not largely contested. Yeah. They scored 126 points, the Detroit Pistons did. They just, they only, only got to the line 12 times. What does that tell you? They shot incredibly well. 51.6% from the floor. 51.4% from three. Because the Jazz can't stay with young athletic wings. And that's not going to change with Rudy on the floor. Why did they lose to the, the L.A. Clippers last year? Even after the Clippers lost Kawhi Leonard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. They lost to the Clippers because they couldn't handle Terrence Mann. They couldn't handle that group of young wings and Paul George who absolutely, you know, fried the, the jazz. That's the continuing theme here. Mm -hmm. Trades need to happen. You need to blow this roster up because I'm telling you, we do the show yesterday and, and about 11 o'clock in the afternoon and everybody's talking about Donovan Mitchell. What does Chris Brickley post on his Instagram? Bet you weren't expecting this one. He posts Donovan Mitchell doing work in his gym in New York. Dribble drive drills, off day work, like dribbling, handling, uh, you know, one bounce jump shooting. This is not, a, 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 the people who wrote us off yesterday and said we were just being haters, I'm telling you now, Donovan Mitchell, if this team does not make a significant roster move, he's not going to be here. Yeah. And, you know, everybody on Twitter yesterday one guy, and I, I, I should find it because it's hysterical. He called me a genius. Um, he's like, look, genius, he just signed a max, max extension. Do you understand that the max extension makes him more tradable? 
because the club that would be getting him would have team control over his contract. And do you also understand that by paying Donovan Mitchell more, he's a legitimate star caliber player in this league. You can get more in return for him because he's under contract. If you just had a, if he had an expiring deal, let's, and let's use the Knicks for an example. Do you really think the Knicks are going to give up an R.J. Barrett type player or a Julius Randle type player? Pick whoever you'd want from them. Do you really think you're going to give up multiple assets to get a Donovan Mitchell type player that's on an expiring contract? No. You're not going to do that. Because you have no idea if he's going to stay with you or not. Well, and I love the comparison of Donovan's situation to Ben Simmons, which is another thing I saw on Twitter. Like, how are those situations even remotely similar? Ben Simmons is a guy who has a glaring flaw in his game. He can't shoot a basketball. He can't. Donovan Mitchell can shoot a basketball at a very high level. Yes. Donovan Mitchell can do everything you need him to do. So he is very tradable. The contract does make him more tradable. And, and I just think that that Donovan's not going to settle for not winning. This thing Damian Lillard said yesterday, that, that loyalty is harder than winning championships, and guys go ring chasing, but, but facing what's in front of you is, is harder, and he's built for it. Well, I got news for you. Donovan's not going to sit around and, and you know, try to win on a nice story. You know, he's not going to try to define That's his right. career on like a nice, oh, well, I was a one-team guy, and, and that should mean that, that I had some great career. I got news for you. Donovan's not doing that. He's not. So when Donovan says we're not championship material right now, yeah, it's not just us saying it anymore, is it? So that's why I say, like, like there needs to be, and the more, the more the, this season goes the way it's currently going these last, like, five, six games, if this doesn't turn around and they don't make, like, a serious improvement in winning, I could see the the teardown beginning sooner rather than later. Like, if you're not going to be, you know, a three seed, what are we really doing? You can't lose to Cleveland tomorrow night. No, you, you can't. can't. You That's can't. at home. You, you got to write the ship. But, you know, one of the other things I think is so interesting is the way that they lost this game. Forget the defensive end. Look at what happened offensively. They come out, Hassan Whiteside gets him out to like a 20-something point lead. And then it just turned into me versus five guys. Like, it turned into iso ball. And when the Jazz struggle, they need drive and kick, ball movement. They need to play their style of basketball to get back on track. But it turns into Jordan Clarkson turns it over. Donovan drives to the basket, turns it over. Mm -hmm. Donovan shoots a wild three, maybe it goes in. Boyan Bogdanovich disappears. Hassan Whiteside getting beat repeatedly defensively. Nothing offensively out of him in the second half. Like they fall apart and it turns into iso ball. Mm -hmm. When what they need, and this is why I wonder, again, everybody talks about chemistry and, oh, Quinn Snyder. Here's why I'm losing. Quinn Snyder's losing me. Here's why. Because where's the composure when it gets difficult? It's easy to have perspective and composure when you're up by 20. The challenge is, what kind of team are you when you're down by 10 and you need a three with five minutes left in the game, yet Donovan takes the ball to the basket and gets it bounced off his schlong and it goes out of bounds, right? Or Bogey shoots an air ball or they miss a wide open layup. Where's the composure then? You call a timeout and immediately it's an ISO for Donovan Mitchell who turns the ball over again. Like, where's the set? Where's the system? Hey, we're going to drive and kick. Four guys are collapsing on you, Don. Drive and kick the ball out. But does he do that? No, he goes up against a double team, and it turns into a turnover. Instead of drive and kick to bogey on the wing, he'll hit a three. Instead of drive and kick to Jordan Clarkson in the corner, he'll hit a three. It turns into hero ball, mm -hmm. and Don and everybody else, yep. because Donovan Mitchell is either selfish or he doesn't trust his teammates, or both. And to me, you got to fix it. And if that means it, <clears throat> Quinn Snyder can't be here, great. Okay, Quinn Snyder can't be here. But what I'm telling you is Quinn is less of a problem than this roster is because it's built around Rudy Gobert's defense instead of Donovan Mitchell's offense. Agreed. 100%. So, Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, let's get some of your thoughts in here. The Nye guy says, uh, morning, dudes. I woke up early for this one. Is Quinn fired yet? The blind swordsman DS says maybe if the Don focused on winning the game instead of 
All-star votes. He's He pisses me off. Morning, boys. Okay. Morning, bud. Uh, Nye Guy says, I really hope Danny Ainge watched every minute of that diarrhea game last night. Neville 93, what's up? He says, I'm disappointed with the Jazz. I'm telling you, I feel heartbroken what's going on with this team, Neville says. Yeah, you should. <clears throat> you should. But but more to the point, <clears throat> you should feel heartbroken that, you know, it took this long to get, you know, that front office corrected. Because, again, this is – and this is the real thing that you should be upset about. Not that they lost to the Pistons or, you right. know, they're in pro- COVID protocol. Like, that's going to happen. But what you should really be upset about as a Jazz fan – is the Gobert contract from the prior regime and Dennis Lindsay, right? You should be upset about, hey, we haven't been good in the draft. You know, you should be upset about, hey, we're not developing, you know, Elijah Hughes and Jared Butler and, you know, these other guys. You know, that's those are the small things that you should be upset about. And, and yeah, like, I like Quinn Snyder just as much as the next guy does. But, you know, this team, it, like, this organization is not going to have Donovan Mitchell-level talent in it forever. And that's the thing. There's there needs to be a sense of urgency to get the job done. And you know, I hope that Danny Ainge brings that sense of urgency. I think he will, but I don't know. The, the actions will speak. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I buy into the idea that you sh- I, that all that Dennis Lindsay garbage is over. Yeah, but you're paying uh, for until, it now. Until, you're paying for un- it now. Until it's not. Yeah, dude. Because you haven't done anything different than Dennis Lindsay did. Because this roster is largely intact. I mean, Rudy Gay's a nice pickup, but what has he really meant to this team wins and losses-wise? Not a whole lot. Uh, You know, you look at the trades they've made, they haven't really made a trade yet. So that's why I'm saying be frustrated with the way this team is playing, but understand that losses like this, you know, really almost obligate you to make change. You cannot keep doing what you're doing. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Jackson says Trey Lyle revenge game. Eh. You know what? I, I think That's I think so long ago. Yeah. It, it, does anybody even care that Trey Lyles was a jazz man? He did his point? job last night. Uh, Giggity says Mrs. Giggity just got over COVID and we have been extremely careful. No idea how she got it, but no one else in the house got it. See, see that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Not, it's not so to, odd. Not to derail the, the jazz conversation, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Hey, my wife has COVID. But none of us got COVID. How does yeah, that even work? Because there's no figuring it out. There's no... There's no, like, hey, A plus B equals 10. Yeah, there's not. You know, like, there's not. Yep. Uh, Brandon Whiteside says, we need to quit treating COVID like herpes. It's here to stay. Don gets cooked, too. Don does get cooked on defense. But Don is a, a, a rapidly improving defender. I, 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 but I think I see Don it. can stay with guys. He may not stop them, but he's right there with them. He's making their life. Yeah. Difficult. He can move left to right. He's yeah. not like stuck in cement shoes like bogey or Joe are. Yeah. You know, like I think that's the difference. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says morning guys. Eh, it's the regular season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it's not just the regular season. You're watching the end of an era in, in jazz basketball. You are watching. And again, Jeremy, you, you're a long time listener. You know, I've said it for months over a year. This roster needs to be dismantled. It is not a, it is no longer acceptable to blame, not that you were, but to blame Dennis Lindsay or Gail Miller. Mm-hmm. Because now it's Ryan Smith and Danny Ainge. Yeah, that's and true. And so yeah. this, this move that's coming, I'm telling you, this team is coming to its end point now. And you need to be ready for that. Like, as a Jazz fan, don't be surprised. Don't yeah. be shocked. I agree. Nye Guy says way too much dribbling last night. James Knight says Donovan Mitchell and Jordan Clarkson Turn the ball over far too much and need to be more active in sharing the ball. The drive and kick game is absolutely not existent last night in Detroit. Yeah, and this stuff about throwing the ball up the sideline from Don to Bogey and just like they they were just careless with it. And that's what that's why I say, like, I yeah, sure. Is it does it suck not to have go bear back there in rim protection? Yeah, it does. It's not ideal. But turning it over and not taking care of the basketball is even worse. I and, mean And the thing I would continue to go back to is are you a championship caliber team when your whole team is built around feeding Rudy Gobert defensively? No, and the answer is no. You're no, it's not because yeah. you're not. If 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 it was such a problem and they were just dunking all over the Jazz last night, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? This is a different game if Rudy plays. They shot fifty one point four percent from three, and fifty one point six percent from the floor. 
that's perimeter defense. Yeah. They they their jump shot was easy and it was going in. I don't care who you are. If you are not if you're not going to have a hand in your face, you're going to make a high 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 percentage of your jump shots in this league. Yep. Cade Cunningham is a young young guy and he cooked you like I I mean I could go on. You know you get it. The reality is whoa. Hey now. Comment dump. Appreciate you guys. The reality is the Jazz are 20 points better with Rudy playing. Fact. Eh, not I don't think so. Uh Bolton says yes, I'm worried, but get to the playoffs and get healthy. But not going to lie, last night was brutal. They played like the Bears out there. We because sure it's garbage. We sure Nagy wasn't coaching. But I think one of the things that's interesting about let's just get to the playoffs and let's get healthy. This is telling you that your your core group is not not good enough. Yeah. Cuz your core guys were there last night. I, I, Rudy Gobert aside, your core guys were there last night. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had you, you had the same group of guys that won games last year. Mike Conley was terrible last night. Mike Conley did not look very good last night. He played. You had your starting five outside of Gobert. Does everybody realize that? I mean, you just he Mike Conley just was not very good. Mike was two of six from three, four of eleven from the floor, and he scored thirteen points. And how long are you going to be able to carry? Here, here's really more to the point. When you're not very good as a Utah Jazz, can you afford to carry Royce O'Neal and let him play thirty five minutes and score seven points and be a minus twenty? Hmm. But he's a great defensive player. And Unless, he's a minus 20. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how is Boyan Bogdanovich a minus 22? How many shots did Bogey get last night? Boyan had nine shots. 0 of 4 from 3, 5 of 9 from the floor. Nine shots. That's not enough. Not even close. This, that he, this team wins when he scores 20 points. 12 points last night. Four rebounds. I, yeah. That's why I say it's not a Gobert issue. Greg Hawkins, what's up? Good to see you. Hassan Whiteside is a heck of a body language, and his body language and effort were terrible. Well, in the second half, they were. Eric Devere says Hassan has issues when he doesn't touch the ball on the offensive end. He pouts and loses hustle and effort. He does. 